So, in this module we hope to complete our discussion of uh, an actual optical parametric amplifier the one we use in our lab. We have this is where we are this is where we got to until the last module. To recap quickly we have this uh, input beam hitting beam splitter 1 80 to 90 percent of which is reflected onto M 7 remaining part of it goes straight using L 1 and L 2 pair of lenses which constitute a uh, telescope the beam uh, diameter is reduced. Then it goes through a couple of plates almost at Brewster angle, but whose uh, tilt can be controlled to bring in some delay in the path. Then after that it goes through an aperture A 1 onto L 3 which is a focusing lens and immediately afterwards there is another beam splitter B S 2 which transmits about 20 percent reflects about 80 percent. The transmitted 20 percent of the beam remember converging beam goes on to M 1 M 2 and after uh, its polarization being rotated by R P 1 half wave plate it gets focused on a sapphire plate denoted W L G here and that is where white light generation takes place. We have not shown the white light generation uh, or the path of the white light yet. Okay. What we have shown is path 2 that is P A 2 pump beam and uh, now uh, we showed w, uh, well uh, even P A 2 pump beam we have shown only the beginning and then we have shown the white light uh, pump beam W L G pump beam path 3. And then what we said is the 80 percent of the light that is reflected by B S 2 hits M 3 that is path 4 which is P A 1 pump beam the pre amplifier pump beam. And remember this is a, uh, a focusing uh, beam. So, it is collected by L 5 which serves to collimate it then the collimated beam hits M 4 then dichroic mirror 1 and as we discussed in the previous module this dichroic mirror is essentially a short pass filter. So, it reflects the 800 nanometer light and as we will see later uh, it transmits the white light and then this 800 nanometer light goes through an aperture A 2 and this uh, nonlinear crystal N C 1. I took some trouble to make this N C 1 crystal rainbow colored I do not know whether it is very obvious in the projection is it. Okay, good. Okay, and then it is dumped. Okay, why is it essential? So generally, when we talk about white light generation or second harmonic generation, some frequency generation, we always focus the beam, right? In this case, why is it that this uh, P A one pump beam is being collimated before being incident on N C one? You agree with me that uh, this uh, P A 1 pump beam is collimated because we are using uh, lens L 5 to collimate it. Why are we not focusing? And what is the purpose of N C 1? What will we do in N C 1? We are going to do optical parametric amplification right. This uh, white light will fall on it and we are going to uh, choose the conditions by which we are going to amplify one of the colors. That is what we that is the role of N C 1 that is the hint why is the pump beam not focused on N C 1? Yes, yes if you focus the pump beam then there is always the danger of getting second harmonic generation and remember second harmonic generation is a more probable process second harmonic will actually have a stronger intensity. Of course, it will come at a different tilt, but it is very easy to get confused. In fact, if you read the manual it says clearly that there should be no second harmonic generation at N C 1. Do not proceed further if there is second harmonic generation at N C 1 that means you are doing it wrong. Okay. That is why you cannot focus the pump beam on N C 1. It is very essential that it is collimated All right. So, that is one thing. Then now it is time to finally show you the path of the white light. Okay. Path of the white light is not very difficult to understand here because the W L G pump is path 3 it has been focused by L 3 
onto this WLG which is the white light generator type the sapphire crystal. Okay. So, naturally it will go straight. Since I cannot draw a white line on a white background I have shown it using blue. Okay. So, this blue line denotes the white light, okay. but there is there are a couple of things that uh, we would better discuss before going further ahead. One thing we have talked about already in the previous module is what is the role of L4? What is the role of L4? How do you generate white light? L3 focuses this pump beam onto the sapphire crystal, right? So, after the sapphire crystal, this pump beam is going to be diverging and white light will also be diverging. So, as we said in the last module, role of L4 is to capture the diverging beam and make it collimated. Okay. That is why you need L4. Then we have something strange here. After L4, there is something called TD. What is TD? Well, in the manual, I also could not find what T is, but D is a diffuser. A diffuser. Diffuser means suppose you take some uh, tracing paper and make light go through it. If it is very intense light, it will go through, right? but it will get a little diffuse. So, what a diffuser does and now finally, we are going to answer the question why it is okay to use and maybe even desirable to use lenses is what a diffuser does is well it diffuses of course, but the meaning of diffusion is it brings in some chart in the white light. Okay. You understand in diffuser this refractive index will be higher right? and uh, the difference in refractive indices of red light and blue light will be different, more different. So, it brings in a chart and since you are consciously putting in a diffuser to bring in a chart anyway, it is fine to use lenses. If anything, it will help bring in a chart. Generally, we like to think chart is bad. Right? That is why you always try to compensate for chart, but the issue is uh, chart is good as well as we saw. Right? Chart pulse amplification is what uh, allows us to get higher energies out of the laser, right? Nobel Prize last year. So, sometimes you can use chart to your advantage as well and here the good thing that can happen if you bring in chart is what are you trying to do? What is the ultimate goal? To amplify one color, okay, one, central, one central wavelength. right? So, if you want to do that, there are several ways in, you can, which, in which you can do it. One is you keep on changing the tilt of NC1 because that is where the amplification will take place, but it will also help if red light comes first, blue light comes later or the other way around. Then what you can do is you can also have a control in time because after all do not forget that this light that is coming in in this direction in path 4 the pump for uh, optical parametric amplification for the preamplifier what kind of light is it? It is a pulse light right it is pulse light. So, if you have a chaffed pulse over 2 picosecond or 3 picosecond and you have this 50 frame to second pulse going in right. This is a 50 frame to second pulse x axis is time of course, or maybe I will just draw it. So, what I am trying to say is this, this is your white light in time, but let us say this is blue, this is yellow, this is red right. So, in early time it is more blue actually it is the other way around this is early time maybe this is 0 this is more right early time it is red intermediate time it is predominantly yellow later time it is predominantly blue and then you have this femtosecond pulse coming in. If it comes in at this time because you have two different path lengths right we have studied uh, uh, this uh, uh, femtosecond optical gating we have studied pump probe. So, we know that you can change the delay and that is how we do all our experiments anyway. Here also what is happening is if you 
have the path lengths in such a way that the femtosecond pulse arrives here, then it is going to amplify yellow light. If it arrives here, then it will preferably amplify red light. If it comes here, it will preferably amplify blue light. Okay. So, delay is a second parameter that comes in right? that can give you uh, efficient optical parametric amplification. Understood? That is why we are talking about delay 1 and delay 2. Okay. So, remember moving m 1 m 2 forward backward that is delay 1, tilting d p 1 d p 2 that is delay 2. So, by doing all that what are you doing essentially? You are changing the uh, when you change uh, this one delay 2 that will affect both actually right and when you change m 1 m 2 what will uh, which path will be affected white light or uh, the uh, pump yeah. So, you are essentially moving that spectrum forward or backward okay. and thereby you are choosing the optimal wavelength that can be amplified provided you set the n c 1 crystal at the right wavelength okay. and chirp is not a problem. First of all here you see chirp is an uh, advantage. Secondly remember you are amplifying only one color only one modal wavelength right that takes care of the chirp you do not have to compensate later on. If you want you can still put in prism pulses prism pairs later on it is not required because out of this chirp pulse which is spread over 2 picosecond or something you are actually choosing one color as a central wavelength and you are amplifying it. Okay. Everything else is not even considered. So, chirp is forgotten the moment you do optical parametric amplification. Okay. That is why it is okay to use lenses may be desirable. That is why there is no need to use prism pairs later on unless you have some very special application. Okay. And this is where uh, the uh, smartness of design comes in where you put in a diffuser to bring in chirp. All right. So, once again if you by mistake remove that diffuser or replace it by uh, something else you might not get the desirable result. All right. So, this is what happens. So, this blue light blue line is your white light that comes in straight goes through the uh, dichroic mirror d m 1 and remember what we said earlier well we had made a mistake while saying it earlier, but actually it goes in non collinear in a non collinear fashion. Why does it go in in a non collinear fashion? Because when white light goes in like this if pump goes in at a little different angle then you can just dump it you do not have to worry about the pump anymore right. If they are collinear then the signal will travel in the same direction then you have to worry about cutting out the pump. But if they are non collinear this is pump this is the direction of white light this will be the direction of your signal as well right. So, you do not worry about the pump anymore just dump it are we clear so far. Okay. So, from uh, N C 1 you get the signal the wavelength that you desire. Okay. So, what what will where will it go? It will go straight to m 5 then to m 6 I have drawn it a little badly m 6 and m 9 seem to be connected and then it will go straight right. Let me show you the path signal m 5 m 6 then again you collimate it a little bit here collimation is required because it is going through this nonlinear crystal some amount of uh, focusing defocusing will come in okay. and then it goes through another dichroic mirror on to n c 2. Why dichroic mirror why n c 2 now you can understand dichroic mirror because that is what is going to be used to bring in this thick beam path 2. P A 2 pump and Y N C 2 that is where your final amplification will take place. So, what have we done at N C 1? We have generated uh, some signal, signal of uh, moderate intensity 
moderate amount of amplification has taken place. In the second phase, second stage, second stage power amplifier PA2 that is where first of all your signal is stronger than what it was in the white light. Secondly, you are going to pump using a much more energy okay. that is where your final amplification will take place. All right. So, this is the path of the uh, this is number 4 no this is number 6 the signal beam of course, it will go straight later on, but now finally, let me show you path 2 which we have uh, only started at the beginning of the discussion, but did not go further. Can you guess where path uh, uh, which path this beam will follow? Yeah. I should have broken a little bit, okay. but let us see if I can just follow it uh, and show you. So, of course, if you just follow the number of the mirrors, you can uh, sort of understand. So, first of all from the beam splitter, remember 80 percent of the total input hits M 7 is directed to M 8, these are all highly, highly reflective mirror from M 8 to M 9, M 9 to M 10, M 10 to M 11. M 11 to M 12 I have not named one of the optics here later on 13 I think and then from M 12 it goes and hits the dielectric the uh, dichroic mirror. Remember dichroic mirror is a short pass mirror or long pass mirror short pass short pass filter. So, it is going to reflect this pump beam and the alignment has to be such that after hitting D M 2 the path of the pump uh, the pump beam is exactly coincident collinear with the path of the signal beam because in the second stage amplification we use collinear geometry all right Achha, what is the need of so many mirrors why do we need so many mirrors i mean after m8 or what was the need of m8 m9 uh, if i just wanted to go here i could have sent it from m7 to m12 from M 12 it could have gone to D M 2 it, it would have been perfectly uh, possible to align. Why do we use so many mirrors? Path lengths have to match remember path lengths have to match temporal overlap is important otherwise nothing will take place. So, all these mirrors what they do is they give you the. So, suppose the path length is something like 2 meter or 1 meter. It does not make sense for uh, you to put a mirror on a 1 meter long stage right. It is better to use fixed mirrors folded cavity kind of thing and more or less make up to 1 meter up to the nearest millimeter and rest of it you use you make up using translation stage that is what is done ok. Then the signal so what happens in the second stage P A 2 or amplifier 2 is that the pump and the signal travel in the same direction. Then they are coincident on N C 2 that is where the final amplification takes place. Okay. How will uh, these, uh, this amplification take place? What do you have to do in N C 2? First of all uh, some mirror has to be moved that is there and secondly the angle has to be tuned. All this is done using software using computer control. You can do it by hand, but uh, it is Initially when alignment is done it is done by hand after that the computer is trained that uh, this is the setting for this wavelength and all and then there is an algorithm that sort of tells the computer that if this is the setting for uh, say 700 nanometer then change the setting to this and you will get 600 nanometer sort of something like that. Now then what you have is you have DM 3 what is DM 3 dielectric mirror 3 again it transmits the signal reflects the pump. So, D M 3 reflects it to uh, I have not written the name of this mirror there is no place this is M 13 to M 14 and M 14 finally guides the uh, pump beam out and through D M 3 you get the signal coming out. So, you have two outputs of topaz one is signal one is pump and what you could do is you could use crystals after this to generate second harmonic, third harmonic, fourth harmonic if possible and that is what gives us so much of tunability.
Okay. So, finally, we have uh, completed the discussion of the entire uh, beam path. So, but uh, well not quite uh, a couple of more things that I want to show you is this. Now, what you should do is you should take these pictures go to topaz if a topaz is available then uh, compare and see because what I have drawn here is just uh, schematic your mirrors actually do not look like this. So, here uh, you can see this is the beam input pathway it comes in like this this is what the beam splitter looks like from the top this is the second mirror and then you go straight this is this is L 1 this is L 2 these lenses are actually mounted on cylinders and in principle you can move them back and forth you should not unless it everything is broken and you have to and, and you know how to fix it. Next this is the white light generation stage. So, remember uh, what we had in white light generation stage uh, we had R p 1. So, this is the pump right coming in right and this number 1 2 in this diagrams are not always the same as numbers 1 2 that we used in our master diagram. So, this is the pump that comes in you see this is m 1 from the top this is m 2 and what you can hopefully see is that uh, you are looking from the top right. So, this is the mirror as you see it from the top this is the mirror as you see it on the top this square thing you see at the bottom that is the plate on which these two mirrors are mounted and this thing sticking out from here that is the motor. Okay. So, m 1 m 2 together can be moved back and forth retro reflector that is your delay 1 and then this is the uh, half wave plate this is where white light generation takes place and white light goes out this here is the diffuser and this is the dichroic mirror this is a view from the top and this is your isometric uh, diagram this is a good simulation of what it looks like except colors may or may not be exactly like this they are right the mirrors are uh, have similar color or are they transparent. Okay. So, this is what it is this is the diffuser it goes straight. Now, uh, so one thing that one needs to be very careful about as we discussed earlier is the quality of white light. So, if you hold a card in front of M 4 you will get to see what the white light looks like and this is an example these are a couple of examples of good white light and bad white light. Okay. Good white light is well symmetry is beauty right. So, uh, good white light is beautiful symmetric bad white light is asymmetric. So, this kind of a situation is encountered if your pump power is too high. So, if you get white light like this what do you have to do remember the variable filter you have to move the variable filter a little bit. So, that uh, more O D is used. So, cut down on the pump and white light should get fixed. We generally do not play around with the lenses in this case because as you understand if you move L 3 not only is the white light generation pathway affected the uh, pre amplifier path is also affected okay. and that would bring in too much of uh, your alignment. So, it is better to use the uh, variable filter that do, that is something that does not change too many parameters, but if you have white light like this that is absolutely unsatisfactory you are put pumping too much putting in too much of power too good is no good decrease it okay, that is why we need it and you should be able to get back white light like this. Moving on this is the isometric view of pre amplifier once again if you have seen topaz you will be able to uh, compare the optics and know which is which this is uh, how you see collimation of the signal beam L 6 L 7 yeah. and this is how power amplification of the signal takes place. So, uh, the reason why I am even showing this pictures is that please go back and have a look and identify the optics then only we will uh, will we understand uh, what is going on inside. Okay. So, that brings us to the end of this uh, three uh, module long discussion on topaz. So, hopefully we all have a working knowledge of the instrument now. So, uh, and also it has been a longer than expected duration of discussion of just instruments. So, in the next few modules 
what we will do is we will present some seminal experiments using uh, pump probe and uh, femtosecond up conversion and then uh, we will go on to discuss some other techniques things that we do not do in our lab, but things that are uh, quite common nowadays and we should know about it. Depending on how much time we have at the end we want to discuss two dimensional spectroscopy electronic and vibrational uh, and we want to discuss uh, if possible uh, terahertz spectroscopy. I do not know whether we will be able to uh, get that far, but uh, if you are in the business of uh, ultrafast spectroscopy it makes sense to know those techniques otherwise you will read papers and not understand anything right. So, that is what we will try to do and uh, while doing that we have to come back to instruments once again a little bit not this much, but we will need to uh, learn certain aspects uh, that we will do. Uh, another ex experiment that I really want to talk about is uh, stimulated Raman kind of experiments that is not very difficult to understand once you know pump probe. Okay. So, we break here today and uh, uh, next few uh, semesters will be of a little different flavor.